Today we're going to take a look at this excellent hang gliding incident analysis video. So this guy is soaring the ridge with his Atos and then this happens. Now this is my first video about a hang gliding incident, but since we're all brothers and sisters in the sky here with our own aircraft, I think it would be very useful for you guys that are usually not flying hang gliders to get a little bit more insight into what goes on in the mind and the decision making process that this hang glider pilot went through. I believe it makes you a better pilot if you not only have an understanding of what your own aircraft can and can do, but also know what other recreational aviators fly with. So you understand their decision making, which makes your decision making better. Welcome to Flight Coach. My mission is helping you get more out of life and your flying career to flying with less stress and more skills. It's been a while since my last video. I've been very hard at work training a lot of pilots in our new simulator. Uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, check the video I'm linking up there. And to top it all off, we recently built another simulator which we installed at one of our business um, customers, one of Europe's largest flight schools, airtime paragliding sport which mainly operate in the Alps region. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a crazy ride and I absolutely love it. So yeah, I stopped making bi-weekly videos a while ago, but I promise you guys when I have really something to share, I will and you'll hear from me. So that is today. Now, before I go into more detail about this video, if you have not seen it yet, I recommend that you watch it first in its full length. So, um, Please do that now and come back to this video uh, later. Uh, I'll link the original one in the description down below. So welcome back or good you're still here. So I'll just start uh, skipping through what we see happening in the video and provide a little bit more context for those of you that do not fly hang gliders. So the first key remark this pilot, and it's a sort of a spoiler already, this pilot um, makes at the beginning of the video is about the gradient. And this is what Medio Parapont had to say about it. Lovely. So from this, two things are obvious. If you don't speed up, you'll be going backwards. And this will be turbulent as f So yeah, great point. If you look at this wind gradient, it looks nasty reasonably calm winds at the bottom layer but immediately on top of that you see a huge increase in speed so unfortunately we can't see the actual altitudes that are normally lined vertically here but as you can see by the the, the general image very big arrows very big numbers and a very steep increase in wind speed with altitude and as he correctly points out, this causes a lot of turbulence and very unpleasant flying conditions. But as he mentions in the video, he did not check the wind gradient before flying. He checked this afterwards. Takeoff so, was okay, given the circumstances. Quickly go for the speed bar, pull some speed on, get away from the ridge. Okay, so a lot of things happening in a few seconds. Um, you hang glider pilots watching, this is probably all completely natural to you, but for most of us paragliders, uh, paramotor pilots, sailplane pilots, balloonists, whatever, um, there's a lot happening here. So he is explaining that he made a reasonably normal launch and after that had to pull on the speed bar. Now, this is a, might be a confusing term because in paragliding the speed bar changes the angle of the glider by pushing uh, with your feet against it. Um, the speed bar he's talking about is the thing he is holding with his hands. It's also called a bottom bar. And what you actually do as a hang glider pilot when this is the wing and you're hanging underneath it is you're just pulling yourself forward, tilting the nose down, or if you're going backwards, the nose is going up. So it's all weight shift that controls the glider, both on the pitch axis and on the roll axis. And what he's also doing is he says he's pulling on speed and you can see him um, move a little wire with his hands. Let's, let's look that up again. Quickly going to happen over here. Speed bar, 
look at this one. Speed on, get yeah. away from the ridge. Then. So he says he's pulling some speed on, and what he's actually doing when you look at it from the from the top of the glider, um, this is the nose. What he's actually doing is he's changing the top angle. So he's actively, uh, by pulling that lever, he's actually spreading the wings out a bit further um, and changing the entire aspect ratio of the wing, uh, which, ha which has the aerodynamic effect that it increases your stall speed, it increases your maximum speed, and it increases your trim speed. So it makes you go faster, but it also um, changes the handling characteristics of the glider. We can already see him moving. You can already see him moving relatively much back and forth. See it happening here. He really needs to correct. And what you see him doing over there, um, it appeared that he was like raising his legs. As you may have noticed, he is still not um, completely uh, in his harness. Hang gliders, they fly with a harness, but they're lying on their belly with their head forward, of course. They have to put their legs in. So uh, at the bottom, currently, it's open. Now, there is a zipper running there with a wire attached to it, which when you have the time and you have the opportunity to let go one hand of the bar, you can pull that wire and close the zipper, which uh, supports your lower body, your legs, a lot more comfortable, uh, makes for a lot more comfortable flying experience. Um, but it's already a signal that he is not doing that. That is because of the turbulence. I am beginning to get a feeling though for the bumpiness of the day. I still haven't reached for my zipper, which is what I normally do. As soon as I have sufficient clearance, I do like to zip up and then also bring down the top zipper. Now, another interesting thing that you may have seen happening here on the left side. Uh, let's go back to that a little bit. Yeah, straight smack in the middle. Um, now, these are called spoilers. They're mounted on top of the wing. And what they actually do is locally increase the drag. Um, let's not go into too much detail, but this, this is an important difference between um, different types of hang gliders and hang gliders versus, for instance, paragliders, which don't have this um, type of uh, roll stability control. So I do like to zip up. So it's something that happens automatically when the wing loading changes. These spoilers, they um, move upwards to, um, uh, to influence the airflow. Now, moving on a bit further you can see he's still flying um, to the right demands all of my attention and as you can see even though we're only about 50 meters above takeoff it's already just going side to side not penetrating at all in fact now he says he's not penetrating at all aside from all the wonderful jokes that we could make about this what he's actually uh, saying is that he is not moving forward with respect to the ridge, to the ground. Um, you can still see that he has quite a reasonable angle relative to the, um, to the ridge. So at this point in time, of course, he could have had the choice to turn uh, perpendicular away from the ridge. Um, and that would, of course, improve his, um, his penetration. But I think in this, at this point in time, he's st still not um, completely realizing what's happening. I think I just went backwards there for a little while. Now we got a very important point coming up. He's turning so to the left now. Sections on the ridge that are bumpy regardless of wind speeds um, on any given day. And so I'm thinking, well, it seems to be a little bit turbulent to the right, so I'm going back to the left to explore some more. This is a very key point in, in the decision-making process of the, of the pilot. Uh, he's explaining here um, that he's deciding to turn to the left because this part of the ridge he's been flying along now um, in certain conditions can get quite bumpy. So information analysis and decision-making, uh, it's in my opinion one of the most important topics uh, in flying, in being a pilot. And you can hear me talk about that uh, in a lot of other videos that I've made. Uh, but this is a prime example of that. The pilot is experiencing something and is trying to come to grips with what is happening. Um, trying to find out cause and effect. 
In this case, the pilot assumes that the turbulence he's been experiencing up to thus far is being caused by the shape of the ridge. He knows this ridge very well and he knows this is apparently a part that usually is a bit more bumpy than the part he's flying towards now. Um, what he did not know um, at this point in time is that it was actually caused by the huge wind gradient. Um, so it's a different cause, but at this point in time, the same effect. Um, and this is what we see all the time in decision making. You can compare it to walking outside in the winter and being way colder than you were yesterday. Now, there can be a lot of reasons for this. Um, reason A, is it indeed 10 degrees colder than yesterday? Or B, did you forget to put on your clothes? But in all seriousness, I challenge you and I hope you will challenge yourself, but keep asking yourself the questions. What other factors may be causing what I'm experiencing? So fast forward a few minutes um, and he has uh, flown more to the left. He's turning back to the right again. Uh, as you can see, he's a lot higher um, and he is trying to decide how to solve the situation that he is in. He keeps going up um, and he is having a lot of difficulty going forward. So he's actually deciding to get away from the ridge, but how? So now we're in 60, 65 kilometers an hour winds. So 60, 65 kilometers an hour winds, and he's still moving forward uh, with respect to the ground, but very, very ever so slowly. Um, of course, these are speeds in which you would not dare fly with a paraglider, but of course, this glider, uh, it's, a, it's a rigid wing, has a much broader speed range than uh, we as paragliders fly with. So we can see him bouncing around uh, and he, is, he knows he needs to get away from the ridge as soon as possible. Um, he is not having a lot of forward speed relative to the uh, ground, so he's not laterally really getting away from the ridge. He seems to be almost flying perpendicular to the ridge, getting away. But the challenge is that he keeps going up and he is about to make uh, a decision now and he's going to talk us through it. I also remember being in two minds about what to do because slow down or pull on the flaps and you go backwards. So option one is slowing down. Um, means using the flaps that are also on the uh, on the atos and uh, more rigid and also some flex wings have them um, it's actually comparable to what we can do when we break the paraglider actually what you do if this is the back of the wing is you tilt it down you increase the drag um, and it makes you fly slower so option one is decelerating and hoping to lose altitude by doing that the most probable downside of doing that is that he will not be moving forward anymore, but will start moving backwards relative to the terrain, getting closer to the ridge, maybe ending up on the ridge or against the ridge. Um, sounds unpleasant. Speed up and you'll be hitting turbulences at speeds of 80, 90, nearly 100. Do you really want that? So the second option is speeding up. But the major downside of flying 100 km per hour airspeed versus 60 km airspeed as he's doing now is that he will um, hit the turbulence much harder. So everything that hits him has a more profound effect. First thing he is going to try is um, option A. It means flying slower and getting uh, down as fast as possible. So what you can see him doing now is pulling the wire that pulls the flaps down, uh, slows him down uh, in an effort to get down as fast as possible underneath that turbulent layer. I mean, when I say it doesn't move, I mean the wing deformations you can see here, the constant up and down, the bumps, the, uh, yeah, just the getting shaken about by the turbulence. Now what you can't see in this video, um, if you're not used to looking at this footage or used to flying hang gliders, is that he is really working his ass off to keep the glider level. Um, you can see that happening now and then when he adjusts uh, his, uh, his flaps. 
just now when he was adjusting, he started making those huge pitch moments. Um, that's partially because with one arm, it's just much harder to control yourself. Imagine him working through this. It uh, must have been a really horrific experience. Yeah, you know, so this is uh, quite extraordinary. So flaps are in a fully down position, pulling as much as I can, but you can hear this, the barrier is going mental. It's just going up regardless. So he's tried this for a while with full flaps, but it's not working. He's not going down fast enough. Uh, at times he's even going up. So he's going for the uh, plan B option, which will probably be speeding up. But I'm determined to lose altitude. It seems to be working a little bit. I do reach over for the flaps and say screw it. I'll just risk getting battered even worse. Okay, so now he's committed to the second option. You can see it by um, looking at his flaps. Uh, they're off, he's not using his flaps anymore and he's now uh, chosen the option to accelerate, to um, accept the uh, possible downside of being really battered by this uh, strong turbulence. I am already, but I want to get away from that ridge. I need to get away from the Venturi effect that's keeping me pinned. Yeah, so the Venturi effect, uh, I spoke about this earlier, I spoke about this in, in many videos, but simply put, that's the uh, air squeezing through a, uh, a narrow opening. And in this case, um, it's caused by the, uh, the shape of the ridge. Over any uh, ridge, you'll have um, a layer in which the wind is, in which the air is traveling faster uh, than the actual wind speed because it's being, well, pushed into that narrower area. And that's where he is currently located uh, in. And the most nasty moment of the entire flight is about to come up. So I'll just uh, watch it and shut up and we, we can talk about it afterwards. Take a close look at uh, both the uh, bottom image uh, and the top one. And imagine you're this pilot. So as I'm clawing my way back to freedom inch by inch, we're coming up to the most remarkable moment of the flight. Now do check the ridge behind me as a point of reference as I go down, because this seems near enough free fall. Well, this is a very uh, unpleasant attitude to be in with your aircraft. And what the pilot goes on to describing is that he is uh, afraid his aircraft would, uh, would tuck, meaning uh, basically that it would flip over forwards. Um, and that usually ends in a uh, in an uncontrollable flat spin, a very uh, unpleasant situation. Um, so he's also mentioning that this felt to him like a free fall. Man, a scary, scary situation. So that was the uh, the hardest, most scary part of the flight. Let's have uh, let's have a little look at the uh, at the landing part. You can see him taking the the VG as it's called, the variable geometry off again. Um, to change his speed, to lower his speed, to be ready for an approach. Because as we spoke about earlier, the, uh, using the variable geometry, um, it increases the aspect ratio, it increases your stall speed. And what you don't want upon landing is a high stall speed. You want a low stall speed. So that's what he's, that's what he's doing here on uh, what seems like to be a base leg. Coming into final, starting now. Starting to final now. Managed to get the zipper open. I did want to keep my options open, perhaps have a uh, landing on my legs instead of on the skids. But Still turbulent, uh, but he managed to get his zipper open, get his legs out, as you hear him say. It's always a decision that you have to make as a, as a hang gliding pilot. Do you want to land on your legs or do you want to land on, on the skids, as he is uh, referring to. Uh, some hang gliders have wheels instead of uh, skids, it depends on the type. There are two wooden poles they used to yeah. liberate. Great, great choice of song, sing hallelujah. This must be a liberating feeling getting back to the ground again. Landing yep, on the skids yet. to keep full control over the glider. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. I think he was saying the F word which I think is quite a mild expression of uh, how I would have felt in his situation. So, lessons. 
What's the moral of the story? Don't do this at home, kids, and prepare your flight appropriately. Don't do this at home and prepare your flight appropriately. Oh man, that's a, an ultra short summary, um, but it's 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 spot on. You know, preparing for a flight means more than just checking the winds uh, laterally, so to speak. Um, it's not only worth knowing where the wind is coming from and how strong it is at, at ground level or the level at which you're launching or landing, but also take a, a, a look at the wind gradient because it can have, a, can have a very profound effect even on a local rich soaring flight, which this was. Imagine if you're flying in the high mountains and you forget to check the, um, the wind gradient, then uh, that can lead to all kinds of other complications. And another lesson that I'd like to add to this is make sure you share your lessons. Making a video showing how cool your holiday was and what beautiful views you had, it's great to watch and it's, it's inspirational. But there are already so many videos of this kind. Showing what you've been through, uh, what errors you've made, what you learned from it um, in such a way that others can learn from it. Yeah, doing that, I think, is a huge contribution to our sport um, and to all air sports in general. So thank you a lot, uh, Volkmar, for making this video, not spending your time sitting on the couch watching Netflix and drinking beer, but spending a lot of your spare time making this video, analyzing it for us um, and condensing some lessons from it. Really grateful. Uh, I hope you all got some more insight now into how hang gliders work. Uh, in general, how uh, the ATOS, uh, one of the best performing uh, rigid hang gliders there is, works. Um, and getting a better feel of what these pilots that you and I fly with in the air uh, face. So next time you see them, be sure to give them a, a wave uh, and enjoy those thermals together. Don't forget to check out Volkmar's channel called The World of Hang Gliding. There's lots of great videos uh, in there also of him flying between paragliders, for instance. And maybe after checking out his channel, you'll even subscribe to it, uh, helping him towards that 1000 subscriber mark. Uh, I think he'll really appreciate that. See you next time. See you in the air.